for a long time, we have actually propagated the lie or believed the lie that our culture told us that we could be a hero without overcoming anything. Okay, today we're gonna to talk about strong in faith. Strong in faith. Now, I love this quote by Oswald Chambers. It says, God does not give us overcoming life. He gives us life as we overcome. Do you know that you were created to overcome? Do you know as you overcome, you feel more life inside of you? God is wanting you to experience what it means to overcome. But for a long time, we have actually propagated the lie or believed the lie that our culture told us that we could be a hero without overcoming anything. The truth is you cannot be a hero without a battle and you and I are called to be overcomers. And overcomers are people who are people of action. I want to go into this whole idea of strong in faith. And I'm going to go right into Hebrews 11, verse 1. I'm going to read it from the ESV first, and I'm going to read it out of a couple other versions. ESV says, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. The King James says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. The NLT says, faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about the things we cannot see. And then it goes on to say, through their faith, the people in days of old earned a good reputation. In the above verses, we heard faith described as assurance. We heard it as substance, and we heard it as confidence. An assurance means it's going to happen. It's like insurance, but assurance. You can be assured that it's going to happen. But I want to hone in on this word, substance. Faith is the substance. This word substance actually translates to matter. Faith is this matter. It is this thing that takes up space in our life. It is a, a capacity. Faith is the substance that God works with that gives us evidence of the things not yet seen. There are things that you are hoping for. There's things that I'm hoping for. I'm hoping to come out strong. I'm hoping that we will become a people known for our faith a people known for strength. What I hope for, I hope that you have a stronger marriage after this season. I hope that we have a more godly nation after this season. I hope that we have a more humble nation after this season. I am believing that for what I am hoping for, I have faith that this hardship is actually going to produce something of substance in us and it's going to give us a greater hope. We're gonna to have to understand that God actually wants us to be those people who would dare to hope when everybody is doubting, dare to believe when everybody is afraid to even think of having faith. So let's talk about this. So Hebrews verse three, 11, three says, go on to explain by faith. So we talked about faith as a substance, we talked about this is how the people of the olden days lived. But then it goes on and says, now I'm going to talk to you about what you need to see as an example of faith. It says, by faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command. That what we now see, everything that we see, did not come from anything that can be seen. Do you know that God spoke the world into existence you can't see my words, but God spoke you and me into existence. He spoke everything that we can see by the unseen. Do you know they've actually discovered that our human DNA looks like a sound strand? So God spoke. He called you and I 
by name into this time, into this day. You were made for this moment. You were made to overcome, not be over. Come. And then he goes on, he's like, okay, I need to give you some examples of what that looks like to overcome. Hebrews 11, 4 says, it was by faith that Abel brought a more acceptable offering to God than Cain did. How? Well, instead of doing something in his own strength, he actually followed the pattern of what God had done for his parents. He said, I'm going to look at what my father God did, and I'm going to bring what I already know covers. So he didn't take what he could raise in his own strength. He, he actually took the example of God's sacrifice. And it says, Abel's offering gave evidence that he was a righteous man and God showed his approval of his gifts. And it says, although Abel is long dead, he still speaks to us by his example of faith. See, I want to be the kind of person and I want to challenge you to be the kind of person that we leave a legacy of faith behind, that people look at how we acted in this day and our example will stand to encourage others in the future. And then it goes on to say, it was by faith that Enoch was taken up to heaven without dying. He just disappeared because God took him. For before he was taken, he was known as a person who pleased God. God, how can we be those kind of people who please God? I want to be the kind of person like Enoch. I want to be the kind of person like Abel. We're talking about being legacy people. And then it goes on to say, okay, I'll, I'll tell you how to please God. In verse six, it says, and it is impossible to please God without faith. Well, if it's impossible to please God without faith, that means it's possible to please God with faith. Anyone. I love that. Anyone, anyone. It's not just for the select few. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. That's a twofold thing. We believe that he exists and we believe that he rewards. That means we believe that God is and we believe he is good. We don't just believe he's good for everybody else. We believe he is good for us. We believe he is good. We believe he does good. We believe that what he's doing right now is for future good, for a hope and a future. So we believe that God is a rewarder of those who seek him. So becoming strong is about seeking God, understanding not only is he, but that he wants to reward you, that he wants to do good to you and for you. Then it goes on to say, by faith, Noah being warned by God concerning events as yet unseen in reverent fear, constructed an ark for the saving of his household. You know, when I read that, it had a different meaning for me when I had read it in previous years. Noah constructed an ark for the saving of his household. Do you know our faith in trying times becomes an ark for the saving of our household? And then he goes on to say, by this, he condemned the world and became an heir of righteousness that comes by faith. Wow. How do we make this ark? Because we're not going to go out and get gopher wood. We make this ark through worship. We make this ark through consecration. We make this ark through prayer. We make this ark through repentance. We make this ark by intentionally connecting and saying, God, you know what? Your refuge. We talked about that since the very beginning, and we are going to be a people going forward that are holy. Holy isn't us trying to be good. Holy is about us being God's. It goes on to say, by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. He went out not knowing where he was going. I feel like right now, we've gone into this season not knowing where we are going. But God is saying that the way you've come in is not the way you're going to go out because you're going to go out of this season looking for something different. You're going to go out of this season looking for that city whose builder and maker is God. You're going to come out of this season 
of saying, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know where this is going. And you're going to go forward in an assurance that God is a rewarder, that he has a legacy, that he is doing something. See, faith will lean into your future, but fear will always get you to try to drag along with you your past. I don't want you to actually be that person that allows fear to be your counselor in these days. Fear is a horrible counselor. It will always cause you to inherit what you do not want to inherit. I want you to lean in to the faith of God, even if it's just to say he is good and he does good. Hebrews 11, 33 says, through acts of faith, through acts of faith, they toppled kingdoms, made justice work, took the promises for themselves. They were protected from lions, fires, swords thrust, and they turned disadvantage to advantage. One battles routed alien armies, turned disadvantage to advantage by faith, toppled kingdoms, made justice work, took the promises for themselves. What are some actions that you could take now that would be a movement for it in faith? What is something that you could see God begin to topple in your life? What is something that you could do? Because it doesn't say through thoughts of faith. It says through acts of faith. Maybe as a family, you could get together. Maybe just there's something you could say, what is an action we can take that shows our faith? Maybe it's an action of generosity. Maybe it's to, to give when, when everything says, I want to hold back. Maybe it's to bless somebody who in the past has been cruel and, and mean to you. Maybe it's to reach out to your neighbor. I don't know what that action is, but I'm going to challenge you to say, what is an action I can take in this moment? See, Jesus is the one who is our greatest hero of action. In Hebrews 12, 1, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. And let us run with endurance. That means it's not a sprint, people. And it says, looking to Jesus the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. I want you to know this. You were the joy set before him. When he was on that cross, he was thinking of you. He was thinking of me. He was thinking of us. He was thinking of us joining this cloud of witnesses that is cheering us on and telling us, hey, run well, it's worth it. Lose the weight, cast off everything that has held you back in fear. Lean in to actions and begin to go into motion. I want to close with one of my all-time favorite quotes by A.W. Tozer. It says, we, you and I together, we don't do this alone. We can be in our day what the heroes of faith were in their day. But remember at the time, they didn't know they were heroes. I believe that you are in a position to be a hero. So take action and be strong in faith. Mm -hmm.